So today I'm talking about spirituality in a fractured world and also some related topics. First of all, the body is finite, not spirit. And um, there's a core nugget of truth in that, that the essence of something is, whether, whether it's in touch or feeling authentic, emerging from it without filters or ideas about what you are, what I am, the nakedness being right here together, using all the good qualities in a way to emit abundance, like science to psychology to spirituality, both satisfied and satisfying, fulfilled and fulfilling. Ordinary experience continuum, like ordinary to a spiritual experience. This is from radical acceptance, which is whatever is being encountered becomes the portal itself to the next possible experience, which is allowing ourselves to experience that, whatever that is, without rejection or assuming or expectation. It's a natural unfolding and flowering. Clarity becomes more crisp. Vision becomes precise. We step into new paths and open into a new universe. It's like a love affair. It can be drowning in love, immersive, passionate with our life. We can't help but fall in love with all the amazing pleasure and seeing the striking beauty. The hardest saying yes is why it feels good. Can we ask someone, what do I take myself to be? Then we ask ourselves, what do I take myself to be? Then what else? Or am I feeling friendly, interested toward myself or my experience? Um, am I rejecting it or wishing it was different and judging? And the fractured world is evident in a polarization and reactivity and disunity or wedges and repression. It could be in family, friends, work, community, or nation. It, it can come from a deeper open-hearted intelligence which is wisdom and love where we have to first acknowledge the negativity to not be in discord or a lack of harmony anymore is that open space for contributing a witnessing of it for healing in other words not taking on the negative as identity which is creating the sense of conflict with the, our positive nature but this allows for us to let it go and leaves the observer feeling wholeness and the health that still remains we can be willing to see where our actions and en energy have created disparity or have created optimization and luminosity is what supports all to exist being in touch with light luminosity results in the felt sense of security and confidence and non-defensive strength um, we have empathy and sensitivity and having boundaries and relations with other people and true connection can bring compassion and caring into daily everyday life Ease, openness, curiosity, they have a rippling effect. And this is why it's worth it to look into our inner conflicts, whether it's fear, anger, inability to cope, so we can stop carrying the fracturing patterns we perpetuate via our difficulties and realizing the transformational journey to find a way that, to that wellspring of being, where self-development offers new perspectives and expressions, bringing, bringing in different meanings, more depth and true faith and hope. The world needs us to be us. The world needs me to be me, and the world needs you to be you. So I had a talk with someone, her name was Deborah, and we were saying that jealousy is, is like uh, not really kosher, not really sneeze. And it's not really about connection or modesty. And when we're hypercritical of ourselves, we, it will make us hypercritical of others. But what, as we get over shame, um, you know, this acceptance of self will allow for us to have acceptance of other people's needs too. Because peace and grace is like a solution to the fear of death. And even fear of death is like fear of losing ourselves. Could be fear of being more attractive to men. Like, for example, if I lose weight, maybe I'll be seen too much. And so that's how we really have to look at it. How can we be our own best advocate? It's less drama. And even in the small things like an action plan, we don't have to get too attached. It's not really a to-do list. And then I watched a video from Rabbi Mangela, a Holocaust video. And he said, we go to death or to life? L'chaim or l'maves? There was a baby ripped in two um, in the video, like, you know, why, it's like why an impression in the soul can be there for not wanting to give birth um, in the Holocaust. And there was a child being taken. It's kind of like this idea that I used to be haunted by this vision of a ripped body in, in half, like by the legs. And there's no way to really know if one of us was a Nazi in a past life um, or not. And... Um, the fact, the fact that so many died in the gas chamber can cause an impression in the soul for breathing. So I know also that there's like a sense of shame, relief. Like they didn't really have bathrooms properly, cleanliness properly. So it's like, 
bathroom shame, no relief. And really the truth is we don't need to confess to be absolved. A truth is true even if we don't share it with anyone because relational truths don't need things to be good or bad because the process or the dynamic itself shifts naturally. Abstinence or sobriety isn't always, sobriety isn't always right. And finally, the Manhattan Meditation Center, uh, the Brahma Kumaris, which is uh, Eastern religion, or an Eastern tradition, I, would, I wouldn't call it a religion, um, very much related to the Abrahamic kind of um, lineage. So they say our job is means to serve, to meet others, uplift the spirit of others, to share deeper and meaningful interactions that empower them. And the seed contains all the information for life, transforms surrounding matter to be like itself. It doesn't break through the surface till the critical network is reached and it has a balance in the, and this is where I'll end, in our branches and our rooting. So our spirituality and fractured world, we, we go up and we also go down. That's really the message. Have a blessed evening. Bye.